listeners, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. Yeah? Doing okay. Uh, we're so, now free from the virus. I was going to say, so how's, how's the first week of the Biden administration treated you? Um, I haven't noticed any difference, really. Oh man, I have. That virus is gone, man. Yeah. Like it's it's not even I mean, that's what I hear. It's it's not even out there anymore. Like yeah. it's gone. He's We're able to open up the whole country thanks to him. Yeah. I mean, they're opening up cities and mm-hmm. the, all of it, man. We still gotta keep the mask, but hey, we can leave our houses. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> you're right. That is a that is a wonderful thing. Yeah. It it almost makes you think that uh like maybe the best thing to do was to vote for Biden just so that in in spite of like literally in spite of Trump <laughs> that these people didn't destroy the country. Yeah. It's <laughs> something to think about if nothing else, man. It's yeah. it watching the news was I, so I watched a couple of uh news things before I came over here. Mm-hmm. And and the coverage of course today was big with climate change. That was like he signed a bunch of climate change executive orders mm-hmm. and that was kind of the theme of today. Yeah. But um on top of that, they they did a big segment on that this is the like lowest caseloads we've had like per day or mm-hmm. whatever. Like I mean, it was like the the virus is trending down, yeah. blah 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 blah. I'm like, okay, so we're like a week into Biden here, and we're already like making these. Thank it's, goodness, it's it's getting better already. You yeah. know. Well, I I think we should come back to this later in the in the cast, but. Um, because we got a few people that are just tired of COVID coverage. <laughs> no. We start with COVID, we'll never keep them. <laughs> I, I get it. No, I absolutely get it. But I, I just that was just something I wanted to at least mention is that that it was the coverage today seemed interesting to me. Yeah. As far as that the timing. Um, there was something like you asked me about something last night uh, to as a prompt to to mm. the discussion today. What was it? Ooh, good. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember now. Well, I mean, it was your idea, dude. I know, but I, yeah, I'm lost. I don't remember. Okay. Um, I don't remember what it was either, but I it, do. I remember we were talking, like, I do remember having that conversation now that you mentioned it, but I don't remember what it, exactly it was. Yeah. Well, shoot. I was really hoping that you would, <laughs> you would launch us into this because I didn't, I didn't really take any notes. The only notes that I put down were like clips that I pulled that I thought might be relevant. Yeah. Well, I think that Scott Horton one's a good one. Okay. You, you want to just start with that? I think we could. Okay. Well, let's just start with that. We all agree with that Voltaire thing, that I disagree with what you say, but I'll fight to the death for your right to say it. It's what it means to be an American if it's anything beyond just living between Canada and Mexico, right? It's that we respect each other's right to choose what church we want to go to or not, or to say what we want, to write what we want, to, you know, have a fair trial if we're accused of something. These basic things, and we're willing now to give up that over the thrill of exercising a little bit of censorship over the other guy? Um, all right, yeah. Uh, it's... It's amazing how quickly people have been willing to give up um, everything that this country has claimed, at least, to stand for for, for hundreds of years. Yeah, it's 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 scary to somebody like me. Like, I mean, that this is we're heading down a very dangerous road, and we're mm-hmm. we're getting there quick. Yeah. Like, we're we're not like slowing down. We're picking up speed. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it is due to Trump and the reaction from Trump. That we just that we've had somebody in office that was just completely the establishment could not handle, and the I think the way that they're looking to handle this is just to like just to go completely authoritarian, um, and I think it's a it's a bad way to go to get to get to where they want to go, but it's also not good for us in the country as well. Um, yeah. Um- the, I, I think that there's, I mean, we should just kind of refer people back to the episode on rights. Yeah. The uh, classic that we did, I don't know, a year and a half ago, something like, well, I mean, we did it like <laughs> three years ago or whatever, but that we republished right. about a year and a half ago. Um, and, uh, and just remind people that like rights aren't something that's granted to you. 
Yeah. Yeah, they're... And if you think of it that way, then you're already in trouble, I suppose. Yeah, we're we're just heading down this da- this dangerous road. Uh, it it really what gets me what's going on right now that I think is that I've seen a couple of times in the media is this particularly with the uh, with the with the voting thing with the this election is a fraud thing like this keeps coming back up and the the media has absolutely like you can't say that like i mean anytime somebody starts bringing up points about how they think that things could have been manipulated or something mm-hmm. with the vote like they shut them down like you like literally like and i've seen it twice once with Rand paul and once with the guy from I guess he was um, some congressman in Georgia or something. It was a state congressman. State though, congressman. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't their their yeah because they're both Democrats now. But yeah, it was a state house member or congressman or something. Um, and both times the commenta- the the um, interviewer was literally yelling over these people that when they tried to make any kind of points as far as like actual like well this is what happened here or this is what happened there. Like you just, you cannot say that on TV right now. Yeah. Um, it's kind of amazing that they're preempting any discussion. Well, that's, and that's just it. It wouldn't bother me so much if it was, well, like the, the collusion deal was where, you know, it's talked about a bunch. It, it wouldn't make me feel like there's anything else going on. The mm-hmm. fact that they want to shut this down so hard and so just no, you can't even mention it mm-hmm. tells me that there's got to be something there. Yeah. Like, there's a reason that this is being shut down the way it's being shut down. Well, the the crazy thing about it is before the election, they were warning about um, election fraud and so forth. But since their guy won, yeah, um, now like, you can't talk about it at all. Even uh, they'll be it. talking about it in a year or so when we're running up to the next uh, oh, abso- election now. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's it's crazy like that they it, I just I don't understand that like it's and what you're doing is is you're alienating like a whole group of people and this just like I've said it before it just doesn't end well like there's no way you can like just shut this group of people down and not let them have their voice and this go anywhere good yeah oh and and Brennan was kind enough kind enough to tell us what all groups are part of this <laughs> yes you know? he was. um it, we should we should listen to that clip real quick looks very similar to insurgency movements that we've seen overseas Mm -hmm. where they germinate in different parts of the country and they gain strength and it brings together an unholy alliance frequently of religious religious extremists authoritarians fascists bigots uh, racists nativists uh, even libertarians hope i didn't really force that one in there i I mean i i really wanted to play that because it it made me laugh um so libertarians are now grouped with with white supremacists and bigots yeah. and yeah. so forth as insurrectionists. Yeah. Now I won't deny that the libertarians are, <laughs> are insurrectionists. At least some, there's a, there is a certainly a subcategory yes. of libertarian that would be insurrectionist, but yeah. um, not violent insurrection. We're but, opposed yeah. to that kind it, of thing. It, it's <laughs> actually like codified in our like, Whatever you would, what what you call that thing? The the Constitution? Well, no, not the Constitution, <laughs> but the I would say the opposite is codified in the Constitution. I'm pretty sure there's some some words in there that tell you when your government is is too tyrannical, it's time to change yeah. the government. Oh, a declaration is what declaration, you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, that it's your duty to overthrow an yeah. oppressive government. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, well, it works fine when you're making an excuse to throw uh, throw over, overthrow the government that you're dealing with, and it's, it's yeah. a very different thing when you're talking about the government <laughs> that they established. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, um, the the thing I was trying to think of earlier, like the you know the danger of um, attributing your rights and so forth to the powers of the state, uh, it, it reminded me of a quote from Albert Camus, and it's something Camus. I don't I don't remember how to say his name. He's like French. Anyway. Yeah. Um, he, uh, this is something that we should all keep in mind. And, and, and this is why you should be willing to fight over these things is as he said, freedom is not a gift received from the state. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're, you're already free. The state is taking that freedom away from you. Yeah. (laughs) This is something that, um, I I've heard a lot over the years, mostly from people uh, on the coasts, uh, about, People like us, people yeah. in the South that just don't understand that they would be so much better off if they voted for Democrats. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because uh, 
we're so poor down here. And if we just had enough sense to realize that they were trying to help us, um, yeah. that, you know, we would be better off and we would vote Democrat and they would give us a bunch of money and we would all be wealthy instead of poor and everything would be better for us. Yeah. And I, I've always said to those people when I've had the opportunity to speak to them directly, um, is that, no, there's a, first off, there is a pride in self-reliance down here. Oh, absolutely. Um, but the other part of that is that I think like sometimes it's explicit, but there's at least like a kind of a, an innate understanding that every time somebody gives something to you, it creates an obligation. Yeah. Now, I don't think that that's actually always true, but certainly every time the state gives you something. I was something, fixing to say, anytime your government is giving you something, there's mm -hmm. absolutely something coming the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because like I like giving things to people and I'm. I'm yeah. definitely not trying to create some kind of obligation. Yeah. Um, people sometimes feel that way anyway, I guess. But, uh, but certainly anytime you accept a gift from the state, yeah, you're creating an obligation. Yeah. You talk about healthcare as an example. Um, healthcare is the worst one, and it's the one that scares me the most mm -hmm. because that one, if if you give the government that much control over your over how you treat your body. Then, well, that's the thing that you're giving away. Like you think yeah. you think that you're getting just them providing you with care when things go wrong. Yeah. But what you're also giving them is some authority to tell you how to live your life. Exactly. To to best to live the most healthy life, well, I your, guess. Your body becomes according to them. <laughs> well, your body becomes an asset to the state. Yeah, exactly. Because if if you mistreat your body, they're the ones who have to fix it. Mm -hmm. So there's this, you, you end up with this weird obligation where you, you and you're giving up your freedom in that way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, every, everything that the government gives you, it takes freedom away to do it. Yep. And, and freedom is not a gift from the state. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I tell you one of the things that I, I've seen in all of this um, that frightens me is I've seen a couple of reports now of, um, of children contacting the FBI to report their parents were involved with the protests at Capitol at the Capitol and things like really? that. Yeah. Um, so I've seen, I've seen at least two, uh, separate instances yeah. of this. And so I, I that's some mm, major propaganda right there, man. Yeah. Well, this is, this is what you get when you give your kids over to the government for mm. the first 18 years of their life and yeah. allow them to educate your kids is yeah. that, you know, but that's some like real Soviet style stuff there. Oh, that's like scary. Turning man. in your parents and, and <laughs> no joke, so forth. Man. Um, and it's, uh, and I, like I said, I mean, I think that this is what you can expect if you start allowing the government to raise your kids. Uh, which people have have done in a lot of ways through public school. This yeah. is a lesson to homeschool your kids, by the way. Yeah, right. um, but I, I think that there has been a real assault, uh, not just in this country, but in in all countries where governments are centralized um, against uh, against family and against religion, because these are things that draw loyalties away from the state. Yeah. Um, and and that's the danger of. Of family and religion. And for me, uh, I can think of a few instances where I think that you should turn in family members and it essentially comes down to like child abuse. I was fixing to say, really though, that's the only one I can really come up with. Yeah. So I mean, um, other than that, like your family's supposed to be the ones helping you bury bodies. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. that's, that's how that's supposed to work. Man. Yeah. They like, may not approve, but, but yeah, but the loyalty they, should be to the family, not to oh, the state. And, and time. to think that for these kids, their loyalty is to the state instead of their family. That should terrify people. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a scary proposition right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the state's way down the list on mine, but at the very least, I, I would think that most people, at least with a traditional understanding um, of society, would say that their loyalties are to God, family, state. Yeah. Right? State being last. Yeah. <laughs> now, I can think of a few other things that I would put my <laughs> loyalties into before I would add the state to that list, but yeah. um, but at the very least. Well, even you talking about issues of abuse and stuff, Honestly, man, like in the real world, if there's that kind of abuse going on, like I may not need the state to interfere. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just saying, especially if it's one of my kids, like, uh-uh. Yeah. Like, I, I don't need their help. I'll take care of this. <laughs> yeah. That, I'm well, and I, 
I would not oppose you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be wise not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in these situations. I might even help. Um, I like uh, your kids too. <laughs> well, just say it. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, this is, this is kind of a scary time though, where, um, the things that have been, or at least that I have thought of as being traditionally American are really being torn down around us. Yeah. Um, including the very basic freedoms that, that are codified in the bill of rights as an example. Um, yeah. but also on the economic side, like the, the whole idea of being the, of the self-made man and the being able to work hard, be creative, and and build a life for yourself. Like, all of this is kind of being taken away by the state, particularly in the COVID times where they have literally oh. m- made these mandates that have shut down thousands and thousands of small family-owned businesses and in favor of big multinational corporations. That's what I was fixing to say. That's something that's coming down the pike here in the next few years that I don't think uh, the die has already been cast. I don't think there's anything that can be done now, mm-hmm. but like, just like you say, all of these small businesses that have been destroyed and all of that money has just been funneled in the corporations. Um, and there's, there's no coming back from that. And even even if you had like the right policies in place, I still think that we're de- heading down a very corporate road yeah. as far as business is concerned. Well, and again, it's blamed on one of our principles, which is free enterprise, but this isn't free enterprise. It's not free enterprise when you lock people in their homes and tell them they can't go, mm-hmm. that pe- certain businesses can't open and certain businesses can't, because mm-hmm. that's really what this boiled down to is like, so Walmart and all of these corporations were allowed to keep their doors open, mm-hmm. but like the local restaurants and the local shops and stuff were all forced to shut down. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just, there's no way you can, I mean, you can't compete in that type of market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not anti Amazon or anti Walmart oh, or me whatever. I, like not I've defended these, these corporations repeatedly because what they have done, the reason that they grew so big. It's because the they've done part, a good job. Yeah. is because they provided a, a service at a cost that people were happy to pay and they yeah. were doing it better than anybody else. Yeah. And you can complain about how Walmart treats its, its employees or something like, Oh, well, you know, they, they would be doing better at small mom and pop shops. Probably not, actually. No. Most of the small mom and pop shops, at least tradi- you know, historically, have not been able to afford health insurance, even if it's crappy health insurance. They no. can't really pay you any more than Walmart can. Um, the And on the other side of that is that all those people who have... Um, who are employed by Walmart and people and other people think should be making more money. Well, the whole reason that they're able to live the life as high as they can on the money that they're making at Walmart is because they're also buying at Walmart (laughs) where they're saving 10 or 15% a year on basic things. And that either allows them to buy more basic things and live a better life that way, or it allows them to buy more luxuries and live a better life that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Um, So I'm not, I'm not anti these big businesses, but what I do have a problem with, obviously, is the the government picking winners and losers. Yeah, because that's that's essentially what you have you have in this scenario. Keep talking. Man. Oh my bad. <laughs> you started doing stuff. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that I still had the volume on on the computer, and it might make noise in the background. Uh, I didn't want that. And fair enough. You know. Now, now the the cover is thrown back, and everybody sees behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The wizard is revealed. Um. What were we talking about? Uh, <laughs> corporations taking over, man. Yeah. And and it's not going to get better under Biden also because Biden is not going to be friendly to small businesses anyway. No. Like, so even, like I said, we were heading down the bad road even if we had an administration that was going to be friendly to small business. But Biden has came out and it is going to be a bloodbath if you own a business right now. Um, I mean, it's just, he's, he's not gonna, he, he's not concerned with doing things to help businesses in general. Like, yeah, he's not making it easier to start a business. No, he's not making it easier to maintain a small business. Exactly. Um, he's definitely picking big winners. Yeah. Well, and, and instituting he, regulation, like the climate mm-hmm. change is going to be a big one. And that's something that he is like centered this administration around is climate change. Yeah. Um, and nothing that is being instituted climate change wise is good for business in uh, any way, big, well, big or small. It's good for some businesses. Well, it will be, but it's good for green businesses. It's good for the, the solar panel industry. Yeah. Um, 
or whatever. Uh, now, I, I did find it interesting that he put a moratorium on um, uh, gas and oil rights, or yeah. at least oil rights, but I think gas and oil rights uh, on federal lands and so forth. Yeah. And uh, halted the uh, Keystone Pipeline, which is also not, I mean, like... that's <laughs> Yeah, that's a big one that, that he... he halted that yeah the like, funny thing is that it, it's such a valuable thing that even um super beta justin trudeau <laughs> w- was gonna fight it oh really yeah i get, didn't hear that <laughs> yeah i mean even justin trudeau's on the side of the keystone pipeline and that guy's yeah. you know <laughs> as woke as climate they can change be. as can be yeah, yeah. um and wow. Uh, the big thing I heard was all the jobs that are being lost from it. And the other side of that, so this is just kind of an aside, like how, right. <laughs> how sad would it be if our president, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, yeah. or Kamala Harris or whoever it ends up being, yeah. gets bullied by Justin Trudeau <laughs> into That's, reopening the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, like how sad will that, that be? That would be pretty embarrassing. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> it should be. Right? It should be. <laughs> Oh. Kamala Harris is more of a man than Justin Trudeau. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So. Um, I'm just oh. uh, anyway. Let's not dwell on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <all> right. <laughs> Moving along from there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, you know, and they, I heard somebody talking about the this and saying, well, you know, there's there's plenty of opportunities for electric cars and so forth. Like cars are the only thing that uses petroleum products. Like, yeah. how about jet planes? Well, how do you get around? I don't know of any battery powered commercial jet <laughs> yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I, I know that they've been working on electric airplanes. Oh, I'm sure um, they have, but they're not jets, but they carry like <laughs> a dozen one people? small person. Oh, really? Is that all? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I they're not even, it might yeah. not be that bad, but it's, it's <laughs> but it's close. Yeah. yeah. They're, they, they definitely don't have the power or the sustainability to, yeah. to move hundreds of people from one place to another in a single flight. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and what about like, so you talk about jet planes, sure, that's one thing. But what about um, actual electric power plants? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where does the electricity come from? Yeah, you got me, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, uh, the, the, especially if you're opposed to nuclear. What? What really? Like, ir- there's an answer there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you but, have to be well open minded to it, right? Yeah. Um, the big thing that gets me with the climate change and that, you know, Biden can come out and he can do all, sign all of these orders and do everything he wants, but none of it is going to really touch. If you really want to go after climate change, for one, you have to go after China. But second, we got to stop blowing up people in third world, world countries. Like if you really want to attack climate change and something that the U.S. can do mm-hmm. like right now to really make an effort on that, bring the troops home. Yeah, I because think... I think it's, it, I may not have this right, but it's close. I think, though, that the U.S. military yeah. is the single biggest polluter in the world. So they're worse than China? I think so. I, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me a bit, especially with some of the stories I've heard of just like the burning medical waste and stuff mm-hmm. that's went on in some of these countries. Like, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but I haven't heard that. Mm-hmm. Burn pits is how uh, the good Biden died. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I was referencing for mm-hmm. people who kind of know. Um, but yeah, like I'm just saying, like if 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 he was truly believed the high, the stuff on climate change, that's that's somewhere he could make an impact. Yeah, like, immediately. Yeah. Um, but that's not what they want to do. They want to do all of this, like. I don't know. What do you call it? Virtue signaling. Mm. That, oh, we're you know we're gonna and and in the meantime, what's going to happen is our gas prices are going to go through the roof. Like we're fixing to start really paying for gasoline. Yeah, like, stock up, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I've thought about that. It's like buy man. your oil futures. <laughs> oh, something man. maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I assume that if they limit supply, the price will go up. It's not like we can switch over to an electric economy tomorrow. No. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, so a book to recommend to people um, that I read years ago that I really liked um, is called Energy Victory. It's by uh, Dr. Robert Zubrin. He was the um, he was the NASA engineer that was uh, that started the the Mars Foundation or the Mars Project or Mars Director. I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, he was like um, a big promoter of uh, colonizing Mars at NASA, and then I think he kind of gave up. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, he brilliant guy though, but he wrote this great book called Energy Victory. And it was about it, the the subtitle is something like how to f- how to defeat terrorism, um, you know, through uh, 
reducing our reliance on petroleum or something like that. Now, yeah. and but his what I liked about his um, proposal is that it, like it was a green proposal, biofuels and so forth, uh, alcohol based economy instead of um, petroleum based economy and so forth. Yeah. But it was all built around the free market. Yeah. And like his whole idea was like, there's a whole bunch of other options out there. And, um, so what we should do is we should just open things up to those other options and, and let the best it, man win. See where it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but it was a, it was a really intriguing book and it also went on about, uh, kind of the, the BS surrounding the, um, the oil industry, like some of the, yeah. uh, and the BS surrounding, uh, well, I, I guess it's, it is the BS surrounding the oil industry in that. Um, all these studies that the oil industry has promoted that you couldn't grow enough corn to create enough ethanol to run the country and so forth and how that it was just a lie. Really? Um, yeah. And that it was based on nothing, essentially, and uh, and so forth. But it's, it's a really fascinating book that I would recommend to people. Yeah. Um, well, the climate change stuff is is crazy, man. Like it, it And it really irritates me because I've, I've watched some stuff recently and done a little reading on the climate change. I'm not, and it's not that I'm like anti-climate change. I mean, clearly the climate is changing. Now, mm -hmm. I, I think there's decent evidence that we're a part of that. But the problem I have with what's being done, I know, I, I, I'm not fully in either, Mike, but there's a, there's a fair chance. Yeah. Um, but whether we are or we not, we're not, the stuff that's being proposed by our politicians are not the answer. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's really what gets me. Like, I mean, if we are in fact causing this, there are solutions and things we can do, but it's not the stuff that's being pushed. Yeah. The stuff that's being pushed is stuff to bring us to a one world government and institute control. Yeah, that's really what the what the climate push now is about, is about creating a problem that's so... It's the same as the COVID, actually. Yeah. It's a, creating a problem that's so big that no local government could possibly handle it. So what you need to do is you need to hand over power to this group at the top, and they'll tell you what to do and fix it for you. Exactly. Um and it's all a lie. It is. Uh, I, that part of it is a lie. That part. That part is absolutely um, a lie. Like, I mean, you can you can believe what you want to believe as far as the climate change stuff mm -hmm. goes, and and there's evidence for both sides. I mean, I don't. I'm not firm one way or the other. Yeah. Um, what I know is that if you really want to an answer to any problem in humanity, the answer is pro prosperity. Yeah. Like if you let people. Um, make their own economic choices. If you don't limit people's economic choices, then it just generates more wealth. Yeah. Uh, historically speaking, that has been shown over and over and over again. The more yeah. you liberalize the economy in the sense of the, the fewer rules that you place on people yeah. about how they can, what they can do with their money and what they can do as a business, um, the more businesses and the more wealth is generated. Yeah. And the more wealth is generated, more people are prosperous. Like everybody, like, you know, the rising yeah, tide the rising raises tides, up yeah, all boats, yeah. right? Um, and and it's funny to me because you can ask liberals now or, you know, people on the left now, um, is there more or less poverty in the world now than there was 20 years ago? And nine times out of 10, they'll tell you that it's more. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> it's like, actually significantly less poverty than there was. Yeah. And the reason is because economies like China and India have liberalized, have reduced the number of rules, have allowed people to make more choices in their economic lives. Yeah. And it has pulled literally more than a billion people out of poverty. Yeah. Or, yeah, I think so. It's definitely hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Yeah. And uh, so the the answer has always been let people make their own choices. And the the truth of the matter is that the way you make money in a free market economy is by providing things that people want. Yeah. That you got to help somebody else to do well if you don't have the government involved. Right. And um, and the more money people have in their pockets, the more likely they are to make choices based on uh, you know some kind of morality rather than based on the balance in their bank account. Yeah. Well, and and if you have that, if there's a push towards a more green economy, um, then you'll fund it indirectly. By just letting people make their own choices and generate wealth and have more prosperity so that they can make their own choices and promote the kinds of, of energy production that they want. Yeah. No, I 100% I agree. And of course, if there's more money in it, there's more reason to do research and development. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And, you don't need the it, government to do that. You, yeah. I mean, it's it's <laughs> well, never been necessary in the past. The government does nothing but get in the way of this. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's anytime you start inserting the government into these type of things, they always make more of a mess of it. They don't help. So. No, that's, uh, you know, that's certainly true. Um, I was... Uh, just it occurred to me like I have another I have a, I have a great quote for that. All um, right, man, I've got Mike it. on the quotes tonight. Yeah. I love it. It's a good thing I got this little <laughs> booklet in front of me. Too bad yeah. it's falling apart. I was fixing to say that booklet is, is yeah, it's well, seen better days, it's my been, friend. It's been well used, man. Well used. <laughs> Agreed. Um, lots lots of great information. Well, I skipped right there. past it. Um, I can't remember the quote exactly. It's Benjamin Constant though, and he he said something along the lines of. Um, whenever we ask the government to do our business for us, they do it worse than we would and at greater cost. Yeah. Um, and that might be the exact quote. It's really close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can't find it. Yeah. So we'll but, assume that that's the quote. Yeah, we'll give it that. for today. <laughs> um, but what I did want to talk about on that before we, we shift gears is uh, that it is essentially exactly that. Like you talk about the American dream of being able to you know, to build yourself. And that's been limited to such a great degree by government interference in the market. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, by, so Hunter Thompson was writing about this, right? Like Hunter Thompson is one of my favorite authors. Yeah. Um, and he, he wrote quite a bit about the American dream and how it had changed and shifted and, and whether it was dying or not. Yeah. I don't think that he ever really believed that the American dream was dead. Um, yeah. but he certainly recognized a change. Yeah. And, um, and I, I would say that a big part of that, um, was the, the government taking control of the economy in, um, in various ways. Uh, first through the federal reserve, uh, controlling the money supply, controlling the value of money, uh, controlling credit. Yeah. Um, so that was the first part of it that that really put a limitation on what people were able to do with their own money. This is, you know, a, a way of of limiting people's choices, yeah. limiting people's economic choices, um, and trying to guide them in a way that I, is certainly yeah. not certainly not liberal. Yeah. Um, in the classic classical sense. sense, yeah. Um, and then the next part, and this would be uh, during his time, um, was moving off the gold standard. Yeah. And, um, and that has had a huge impact, obviously. First off, it's, it's been used to fund the forever wars. Yeah. Um, yeah. You really couldn't have the wars and stuff we have without, with us on the gold standard. Yeah. Like, I mean, it just wouldn't work. Um, so it's, you know, it's created the opportunity for this modern monetary theory idea where you can just keep printing. Yeah. Um, if you don't have a hard currency, then kind of you can, I still think it'll come back to bite you in the end. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't you wouldn't have the choice yeah. if you were still on a hard currency. Yeah. And so uh you know, I think that this is a huge part of how the government has has taken control of our economic lives um in a way that has been um you know like really deleterious to our uh, ability to take care of ourselves. And that's part of the point, right? Yeah. Um, is the, to make the population more reliant on the government for handouts of various kinds. And then they can do things like giving us this, this $1,800 total, right? Isn't that what we've gotten <laughs> so far? And there's another 14 coming. So $3,200. So yeah. th just think of it in, the, in this respect. I've been working this whole time. You have too. But, oh, absolutely. But, um, there are people out there who lost their job at the beginning of this. Oh yeah. They've been getting unemployment payments from the state. And they've gotten this additional thirty two hundred dollars. Yeah. For ten months of unemployment. Yeah. Here. Here's thirty two hundred dollars. Yeah. Plus your your sixty percent or whatever of you of what you made before. Yeah. That'll take care of you, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And yeah. and then the whole time, and, and this it's, is the really nutty part, is what they've done is that they, they've been taking your money all this time. And now they're giving it back to you yeah. and making you feel like, like this is a, a gift. Yeah. Like, oh, thank you so much, government. Well, well, you didn't give me quite enough, but at least you gave me what you gave. No, no, no. That's your money that, that they're giving money. you back. Well, it, it really is the old Harry Brown thing where the government, the go, uh, and now I'm going to murder one of his quotes, but the, <laughs> the thing that the government does best is break your legs and then give you crutches and be like, see, without us, you couldn't walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Like, I mean, and that's literally what they've done through this COVID mm-hmm. is with, with this stimulus money and with the unemployment and shutting businesses down. Like, I mean, because, I mean, say what you will about the, the COVID. I think that you don't need the government to tell you to stay home. If you, if you think you need to stay home, that's what you need to do. But it doesn't take the government forcing you to do that. And it certainly doesn't take the government shutting down businesses yeah. for that to happen. Yeah, there's plenty of March. I mean, I talked about it a long time when this first started. Oh, absolutely. March or April. Yeah. Um, in one of the podcasts I was doing on my own, that there are plenty of free market ways of dealing with this. Yeah. Um, people can make their own choices about their lives. Exactly. We're plenty capable. Yeah. Um, Depends on who you ask, obviously. <laughs> obviously, right? <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree. And that's the that's the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard somebody, uh, oh, I can't even remember now, but I, I think it was guns. It was like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a real Democrat because I believe that, uh, that I should be able to have as many guns as I want. <laughs> um, I, you know, I have proven that I can be safe with them. I have a track record. Now, I don't think that everybody should be able to have guns, but I should be able to have guns. Yeah. And so I'm not a real Democrat. And I thought, well, that's actually what makes you a real that Democrat. That makes you a real Democrat. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I believe in this freedom for me, yeah. but let me choose who gets that freedom and who doesn't. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, but it's not actually, it's, that's not just Democrats. That's just people. People in general. Yeah. That's yeah. a, that's a, um, that's a very political viewpoint, yeah. politician viewpoint. Poli- yeah, absolutely. And, uh, anyway, um, you want to shift gears here? Sure. So we may as well go to uh, our great savior, Joe Biden, and how he has defeated so quickly the coronavirus. Yes. Um, you know, okay, so I actually want to, um, I want to open with uh, Fauci. Ooh. <laughs> and um, so here's Fauci talking about how now that, um, now that Trump's gone, he can finally speak freely. I can tell you, I, I take no pleasure at all in being in a situation of contradicting the president. So it was really something that you didn't feel that you could actually say something and there wouldn't be any repercussions about it. The idea that you can get up here and talk about what you know, what the evidence, what the science is, and know that's it. Let the science speak. It is somewhat of a liberating feeling. That guy is a snake. Man, I tell you, they, they don't make them much worse than him. I'm yeah. telling you right now, man. It, it is, yeah. I mean, I'm just, like, he hasn't been able to speak for himself this whole time. He's been countermanding what the president said the for months. Yeah, oh yeah. And, and in fact, he's even been countermanding what the president said when the president said what Fauci said, and then <laughs> Fauci would come back and say, well, no. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. Uh, and I think I... I I, you know, I cut it out, but he actually talks about hydroxychloroquine in that. Well, you know, uh, there's no yeah. science in hydroxychloroquine. This is a guy who wrote a paper <laughs> on how hydroxychloroquine could be used to um, combat the original SARS virus. Yeah. So, so he knows this is like a thing. He knows this is an effective treatment. Yeah. He knew it was yeah. an effective treatment when he was saying, well, there's no science to it. <laughs> like you author the paper saying that there was science yeah. to it. He's also the guy that uh, he co-authored a paper um, uh, also on, the, I think it was SARS. It might've been one of the flus later. I, I don't recall now. The guy's been, you know, bouncing around through public health for a long time. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he wrote a paper about how, um, uh, that they had uh, more um, complications, uh, respiratory complications from um, bacterial respiratory infections from wearing masks than from the from the virus that they were wearing masks to protect themselves from. Oh wow! Yeah, that's interesting information yeah. given the the current policy yeah. that he endorses. Now he did, of course, at the beginning say you don't wear masks. Yeah. Oh, he absolutely yeah, but, did. Um, um, now, now he's the, saying wear two. Yeah, yeah. Well, and now the evidence shows that masks do nothing. Yeah. Well, that's why you got to wear it too. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, the the Swiss cheese model or whatever they say. Something, man. I'm telling you, they're (laughs) all You know, like uh, 
if you if you have one layer of Swiss cheese on something, it doesn't really cover it because of the holes. But if you put enough layers of Swiss cheese, the the it'll cover the holes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's and the, that's the Swiss cheese model. I, I'm not. I don't want to say it was Fauci, but somebody was on the news the other day, and they actually they didn't use that specific model, mm -hmm. but they basically said, yeah, you have to wear multiple masks because it it gives it more fibers for it to travel through, and more yeah. likely that it won't make it through. And I'm like, can we breathe at all? Like, are we allowed? Allowed to breathe air anymore? Yeah, like, the air passes just fine around the edges of the mask. <laughs> well, exactly. No matter how many masks you, you wear. wear. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> completely. You can put concrete up there, but yeah. <laughs> I mm -hmm. tell you, man. Yeah. Um, and of course, so I almost I almost pulled a clip. Of the, all right, so Kerry Mullis is the inventor of the PCR. Okay. Um, and uh, he, I, I almost pulled a clip of him talking about how the PCR was definitely not a test. Yeah. Um, now he died at the end of 2019, and okay. I think that he would be rolling in his grave over the way his PCR has been used to propagate the the propaganda the, yeah. um, uh, about this virus, uh, and you know just like case counts, case counts, case counts. Yeah. Um, before we move on and talk about some of the changes that happened pretty rapidly after Biden took office, uh, I do want to play this clip um, of him talking about Anthony Fauci. All right, because this is funny. This is good. What is it? What What is it about humanity that 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 it wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen? You know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking. You know, he doesn't know anything really about anything, and I'd say that to his face. Nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope, and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy, and he doesn't understand medicine. He, does, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people, and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people who pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. So um, there you go. Uh, the inventor of PCR talking about how Fauci knows nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the idea that we believe these people. And, of course, Fauci has plainly admitted that he's lied, that he stood in front of the camera and lied. Yeah. Okay. In fact, he was kind of doing that in the clip I played of him earlier because, you yeah. know, he was limited in what he could say earlier. So yeah. uh, when Trump was there, he had to stand in front of the camera and lie, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like it wasn't a choice he made. But, of course, he, he said openly that he, um, he lied to the public in order to get them to respond in the way that he wanted them to respond. Yeah. That he didn't give them the whole truth. That he told them what he thought would be... Um, would be sufficient to get them to do what he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. That's, man, that's like the act of a true narcissist right there. Yeah. Well, and he really is. I mean, yeah. he, he, this guy has never gotten so much attention. Yeah. Right. And I think that that's generally true of public health officials all over the place. And they are not letting go of that power that they've been given. No, there's no way. Why would they? No. Um, so now, of course, we have Biden, the great savior in. Um, and uh, so immediately talking about PCRs, um, the WHO, I, I don't remember if it was inauguration day or the next day, um, but the WHO put, put out new protocols about PCRs reducing the number of cycles, yeah. um, to 27. So now the recommended cycle is 27 where it was more than 35. Oh, wow. Um, they were running like 37 to 42 cycles or something like that before in a lot of places, yeah. uh, which of course gives you a whole lot of positive results that probably shouldn't be. Yeah. And that's actually what the WHO cited when they said to reduce it to 27 is because there were a lot of false positives. Yeah. We've been pumping these numbers up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now we've got Trump out of the way and yeah. uh, we can show how, and, and this is what I predicted. I'm pretty, I hope that I said this on the podcast, but I'm pretty sure that I did, that there were some easy ways for uh, Biden once he took office to make changes in the numbers and make it appear like, his, whatever he was doing, even though he's not doing anything different than Trump, actually, yeah. in, in actuality, yeah. he's not doing anything different than Trump, um, how he would 
it, it would show that he, what he was doing was effectively combating the virus. And the first thing that he could do is reduce the number of cycles that they ran PCRs because that will by itself reduce the number of cases that they report. Yep. There you go. Without making any other changes. Yeah. And, and it's, that's exactly what has happened. And that's what they're doing. And then, yeah. of course, you know, now suddenly um, Newsom and uh, Cuomo have developed a conscience and decided that, the, well, they, you know, can't you can't stay, stay locked, stay locked down, down forever. forever right? yep. <laughs> um, yep. So uh, they're opening up California and uh, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, there's no they're not citing that the, what they've done has had has not helped. Yeah. Um, that's not the reason. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of amazing that they had this change of heart right after their, their guy took office. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just a coincidence though, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I tell you, man. And that is part of what's kind of scary as far as just the, the social media stuff, as far as like, or re- like trying to control what's on social media and all of us that it's just, it's, because basically the the veil's been re- I mean anybody that's paying any attention knows exactly what them two were doing. Mm-hmm. Like I mean it's, it's as blatant as day. And it, but the media will pretend that's not the case at all. Yeah. Well, of course so, there was also. I mean we. I don't think we talked about it at the time. But the announcements from the um, pharma companies uh, that they had developed an effective vaccine didn't happen until after the election. Yeah. Well, yeah. All of the stuff is happening, and that it's it's causing people not to trust the media, which. Obviously, they shouldn't. I mean, they're mm-hmm. they're right in that assumption. Yeah. But it's like the media. It's like they don't even see it or understand what what's mm-hmm. going on. Like, there's a reason people. There's a reason people like Trump rise up mm-hmm. because they come out there and they're willing to say what what the, any kind of or endorse any kind of crazy conspiracy or anything. Yeah. And people are more than willing to buy it because they watch what the media does and these politicians do, mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah. I'm not trusting these people. These people are full of crap. Yeah. Well, and the media's response is, why aren't they listening uh, to us? They're listening to all these other news sources that aren't as good as us. So shut down One American News and shut yeah. down, you know, the, they're calling everybody else fake news then and saying that they're, um, you know, that they're peddling conspiracy theories and, and promoting the idea of shutting down these other networks that are uh, opposed to their narrative. Yeah. It's... It's and that's it's a scary thing and that's that's it how, changed recently. Uh, I'm sorry. To no, go for you, it. But, no, please uh, do. It changed recently, but on YouTube. Uh, so I watch um, a couple of international news networks in the morning. Yeah. Um, when I'm getting ready for work, uh, I watch RT America yeah. and I watch France 24 English because my French isn't that good. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you know, and I've seen the BBC, although I don't really watch it. Yeah. But for as long as I can remember. RT has been labeled as a as a um, state funded news source uh, by YouTube. Yeah, but France twenty four only got labeled a state funded news source just a few months ago. Really? <laughs> but they were just as but much a state funded news yeah, source as RT I mean, was. They are, yeah. Um, and BBC the same thing. Yeah. So they singled out RT for whatever reason. I think we know the reason. We know but the reason, yeah. Well, France twenty four and BBC that are also state funded news sources weren't given that um that label and that stigma yeah it is interesting that since you mentioned french 24 i was actually watching that before. that was one of the ones i was watching before i came over today mm-hmm. and it looks like france is getting ready to lock down again oh yeah like for the fourth time or something yeah like, like there it looks like that's probably fixing to happen yeah so. well that's because they think that they're actually effectively combating the virus by doing it yeah. um but this this is how they will effectively combat the virus by locking down. Yeah. They will never let their citizens out of their houses again. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. That's the only way. So they were really proud of their numbers at the beginning when they locked everybody in their homes at the very beginning. And yeah. then as soon as they opened up, the virus started to spread around. Their case numbers climbed. Well, yeah. then they locked down again. Well, okay, well, we got it. We, we trapped it. No problem now. And then they opened up again, and their case numbers started to climb. The virus is going to move around. That's yeah. just that way it's going to work. Yeah. Anytime you let people out, the virus is going to spread. Yeah. And so the only way to combat the virus through lockdown is to never, ever let your people out of their homes. Yeah. That's the road they're going down, it looks like. It's, yeah. Well, that <laughs> France people France will, loves to protest. Yeah. So that will only this last will, so long. I was fixing to say, yeah, there's, it's, this, is, this is a dangerous game. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um. I mean, I suppose that's really all I've got. Um, I would like to finish on a Hunter Thompson quote since we're 
we stole his thing about discussing the death of the American dream. Yes. Um, and this, this is kind of a downer, but it seems apropos. So, uh, so here we go. All Unless right. you got something else to say before I, no, I think, I, I think we're ready to close her out, man. All right. Um, so Hunter Thompson wrote coming of age in a fascist police state will not be a barrel of fun for anybody much less for people like me, who are not inclined to suffer Nazis gladly and feel only contempt for the cowardly flag suckers who would gladly give up their outdated freedom to live for the mess of pottage they've been conned into believing will be freedom from fear. So true. Mm-hmm. This what What's coming is not going to be fun for any of us, especially no. the people like me and you and people that listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and the only thing we People can, that believe in liberty. Yeah, absolutely. And there is, to kind of at least try to pull it back to some kind of positive note, I don't know how positive this is maybe, but mm-hmm. to me it seems positive, is the, mm-hmm. way to, the way to resist this is to do exactly that, not comply. Yeah. Resist. Um, when you go out in public... I mean, do whatever you feel, but I'm just saying the more people that resist this stuff, like mask and stay at home orders and things like that, that's that's normalizing that type of behavior is what we need to be trying to do. Yeah. Um, And not accepting this new normal. Mm -hmm. Um, We need to be out there doing what we want to do the way we want to do it. Yeah. Everyone should cringe every time they hear that phrase. Yeah. Well, I used it specifically because that's what we're resisting. Well, and the other thing that you got to do is promote the truth. Yeah. Um, Let let people know that there have been, as far as I know, two uh, scientific studies of mask use, and both of them have concluded that masks don't make any difference. Yeah. That infection rates are the same whether you wear a mask or not. Exactly. Um, the, the, what they're promoting as science is not the science. Yeah. Um, direct them to this podcast. I was fixing the, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was like, that's the other thing you can do is promote this podcast because we will, we will do everything we can yeah. to be part of the resistance. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't feel like you're making the argument strong enough, hopefully we are. Yep. Um, and, Absolutely. uh, so, uh, and on that note, uh, you can follow us on Facebook and where Podbean. YouTube. YouTube, Podbean. Podbean yeah. yeah. So, uh, like, subscribe, uh, iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, yeah, etc. Um, share and, you know, send yeah. people our way. Yeah, absolutely. Comment, here- let us know what you think. Like I say, um, like I say, post up there, let us know you're listening. If nothing yeah. else, say hey and let us know you enjoyed it. Yeah. You, you can know? always reach me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to get emails. If you have an idea for a topic, if you have something you want me to see or hear or listen to or yeah. read or whatever, send it to me. I'm happy to, I'm happy to take a look at things. We're very um, if you accessible. just got a question for me, yeah, <laughs> at least for right now, yeah. um, you know, Absolutely. when we have, uh, when we have a million downloads and I'm getting like 600 emails a day or something <laughs> like that, it might be a little, I might it'll, have to hire be, somebody. It'll be time but, to quit your job and read well, emails true. all day. That's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> And yes, this, and this, this podcast would be even better if I could like (laughs) commit myself full time to it. Absolutely. Um, But, uh, you know, um, we're here every week and well, mostly for the most part. And, uh, and we'll be here next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. (laughs)